Welcome back to the broadcast. The people of St. Patrick can now boast of having a more reliable water supply at all times. For some, it's a prayer finally answered. The National and Water Sewerage Authority constructed a water treatment plant in the community of Mount Rule in St. Patrick, achieving a major milestone in its strategic plan. A special ceremony was held at the plant on a Thursday evening to mark the occasion. The Mount Rule Water Treatment Plant has the capacity to produce about 250,000 gallons of water per day, the first of its kind with that kind of power. The last time Nawasa undertook a project of this nature was 20 years ago. Constructing this plant became necessary because of problems faced at Peggy's Whim Treatment Plant. Peggy's Whim is vulnerable to blockages by large rocks and fallen trees from the catchment area that are washed down the tributaries. This results in lengthy interruption in the distribution of water from the plant, which means families are left without water supply. Indeed, a stressful situation, not just to customers, but Nawasa as well, who has to bear a high cost of trucking water to the area. General Manager of Nawasa, Christopher Husbands, is proud of his company's achievement and even more elated that the funding used for the project came from monies generated from the people that pay their water bills. This plant provides a critical redundancy that up until this point we don't have. St. Patrick's is the only parish that has one production point. Persons that live up there, live up here, sorry, and those of us that work in Nawasa won't forget the unfortunate events um, April 2013 when the Peggy's Wind plant was out of service for about three weeks because the dams were blocked and we had no backup to supply the persons in St. Patrick's. We had to be trucking water from St. Pat St. Mark's and way down in St. Andrews. And the decision at that time was taken that this had to be one of our priorities to ensure that in the event the climate is not favorable to us again, at least do our part to ensure that we can maintain the quality of life for the people of St. Patrick's. Having a constant and reliable supply of water in any area is good for business. And according to the chairman of the board of directors, it's good for investment prospects. Water delivery, electrification, and basic infrastructure are important ingredients for any investment to take place. Because the first question an investor wants to find out, would I be able to get water in order to pour concrete? And after he's finished doing that, would I be able to flush the toilets thereafter? As simple as these things sound, they are extremely important in any investment. St. Patrick's resident Adam Andal is breathing a sigh of relief that when he opens his tap, water will flow. He applauded Nawasa. I live at one of the most <coughs> elevated points in St. Patrick, Chantimel. And obviously, once the water supply runs low, we are the most affected in that area. So Mr. Husbands and your staff, on behalf of Mr. Boson, the minister, the people of Shantimel and the community of St. Patrick, I want to thank you very much for that initiative and you deserve a round of applause. A number of communities are set to benefit from a couple developmental works to be undertaken by Nawasa in 2015. General Manager Christopher Husbands announced at a recent company event that funding has been secured for capital development. Mr. Husbands says they are looking forward to a busy 2015. We have challenges with supply, we have challenges with leaking lines, so we can't do everything one time, but there certainly are going to be some some new investments coming on stream. Husbands listed some of the communities expected to benefit. Similar projects like this are expected in Spring Garden for the post for residents of Birch Grove and St. James. And also there's going to be some work in Munich for the persons in that area that have challenges with their water quality now. We have lines replacement too. I know the persons that use the tongue of satires are frequent interruptions because of leaking lines that is also done for some attention next year you're watching the gis news sports is next with trevor thwaites
Hi, I am Junior Murray. Let's keep our athletes on sports clean. No dope in sports. Cricket officials hoping for good weather this weekend to allow a trial match in St. David uh, this weekend, of course. Uh, the Barbados Trident goes down a super over in the Champions 2020 competition in India. GFA season alive. It's alive this weekend with matches in three divisions. This is another of the GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. Cricket officials are hoping for good weather to allow a trial match this weekend at the last year's playing field in St. David. The game from 10 o'clock in the morning is the first of two being played by the Grenada Cricket Association to select a 13-man squad for the 2014 Winter Island Cricket Tournament in St. Lucia from October the 29th to November the 6th. 28 players, including several from the Sister Al, are involved in the trial matches. We also have players from Karaku who is going to be part of, of the training camp. But I think you want to special, especially mention Karaku and getting and getting the players involved in the national setup. As, as I think it's it's a plus for us in cricket. Um, Emmanuel Stewart and company will be down for the for the practice game. So I think we we have been doing well. Um, supported by our national coach, um, assisted by that's Mr. Ricky Williams, assisted by a number of other players, um, past players. We have Junior who is there and. Telesford and company who is giving some support towards the, the, the preparation of the team. Um, I know they have been working hard, they have been doing some net sessions, they have been working at the National Stadium trying to get the guys up and running. Secretary of the Grenada Cricket Association, Norman Gilbert, uh, he says that Grenada is making a concerted effort for victory, which is overdue. He says that things are pretty encouraging at this time. We had a very good showing against Bangladesh, I must say. Um, based on based on the performance of the team, I think it was very credible um, at at the Progress Park, and I think based on that, we, we are seeing that we are seeing some improvement in, in in terms of the players' development, and I think that this year should be a good year for us, and I believe this year is a year we can win that tournament. So I believe that with the support of the of the experienced players. Um, Andre and Devon especially, uh, we would be able to bring home victory. Once they are able to you know, put their shoulders to the wheel, we would be able to do so. Secretary of the Grenada Cricket Association, Norman Gilbert. The Barbados Tridents lose in a nail biter to Cape, to Cape Cobras in Mohali in the 2020 Champions League. It was a fantastic day, however, for Barbadian Jonathan Carter, who scored his maiden T20 hundred? He struck an unbeaten 111 from 68 balls with the 10 fours and 5 sixes to lead the Tridents to 174 for 8 in their knock. Munarira was the next best, striking 42. However, the uh, Cobras replied with the same score 174 for 5, with Hashim Amna scoring 59 and Levy 39. A super over was needed to decide the issue, and it ended with the Tridents needing four runs from the final ball. The Centurion Carter could only manage a single as the original team lost by three runs. The defeat means that the Tridents failed to qualify for the playoff. And still with cricket, an Australian on their 17th team will be making a short tour of Grenada next month. The visitors who arrive October the 1st will play three matches on tour. They open up with a 2020 game against upsetters at the Royal St. John playing field in Tandeen, October the 2nd. Then they take on the national under-17 team in two one-day matches. The first is set for October the 3rd and the other October the, the 4th. Senior athletic coach Denise Williams described the Youth Olympic Games as key and very important for the development of young athletes. It's an avenue, she says, to help the youngsters to develop their true potential. Four local athletes participated in the recent games in Nanjing, China, in athletics and swimming. 400 meters runner Melini Rodney won the country's first medal at the Games at bronze. The athletes who 
went to the games, they, they must have learned quite a lot from it and, you know, trying to see if they could improve for next year. Um, Melanie is still under 18 next year. She's already talking about, you know, youth. Next year will be the IWF Youth Games in Columbia. Columbia. Yeah. So she's looking forward to that. Josh will be going up to under 20, so he's asking me what's the competition, what's going to be like, what is it going to be like for us next year. Um, so they're ready, ready. As I said, my only disappointment, though, was that more of our young persons should have been exposed to the games. Um, it, was, it would have been nice to see more of our young, young athletes being exposed to the games. But it doesn't happen like that. At least you have to qualify to get there. We just had one athlete qualifying. So we have to be grateful for what we are able to achieve. William says that it was a wonderful experience for the athletes. The whole atmosphere in the games, just this togetherness of the world was really, really good. The competition was also good. And I think, you know, it's just sort of a preparing them for greater things to come. Like, they you know, want to be part of uh, Olympic Games. So, like, they're looking forward to Melanie, especially looking forward to 2016, going to Rio and continuing to compete and representing Grenada really well. So if for them, it was really good. And it was nice to see them placed in the country first in, in, in um, thinking, always thinking about their country. See now that the coach, Denise Williams. The Grenada Football Association, the GFA season, comes alive this weekend with matches in all three divisions. Okay. Top in the list is the top of the table clash in the Premier Division between Paradise and Hurricanes. The encounter Sunday is at Sunday at Progress Park in St. Andrew, and it's expected to attract a large audience as the teams seek to boost their position in the standings. Paradise lead the uh, table on 31 points, while Hurricanes are 10 points adrift on 21, having played one game fewer than their opponents. Uh, an exciting fixture is in the making as the teams seek a victory to boost their positions. Uh, there's another Premier Division Clash Sunday when GBSS feed Hard Rock at the Roy St. John playing field in Tantin. Also on Sunday, Shanty Mill take on Ball Dogs in the first division tournament at Shanty Mill. Three second division games are scheduled for Saturday when combined Northerners take on Carinage at uh, Tempe. Blue Stars tackle Class Hub Roots at Boucherju, while Springs and Shamrock a clash at the Roy St. John playing field in Tantin. Meanwhile, there were wins for New Hampshire and Boca Juniors in matches of the GFA Second Division played off on Thursday. New Hampshire beat Ball Dogs two goals to nil at Boucherju, and Boca Juniors got the better of Guab FC one goal to nothing at Plains in St. Patrick. That's sports. Some Trevor Threats.